name is Joy Martin. Oh, good evening, everybody. My name is Anita Jefferson. And hey, folks, I'm Terry Roberts, and uh, we are all a part of Intentional Faith, which is a faith-based nonprofit organization in Huntsville, and uh, we, we do spiritual development, and uh, we love the opportunity to do that, to share God's Word, and we've been doing this now, it's amazing, for 67 weeks, we've been recording uh, devotionals starting at the beginning of the pandemic last year. But this will be number 67. And um, today we're going to continue a, a scriptural study that we've entitled Tearing Down Walls, where we're going to where we are addressing spiritual strongholds. And last week we we tried to answer the, the basic question of what is a stronghold and a spiritual stronghold. And today we're going to take the next step and look at some of the origins of spiritual strongholds, how they get hold of our lives and take control there. But uh, before we do, uh, Joy, would you open us up with a word of prayer? I would love to. Father, I thank you for meeting here with us right now on this day in July of 2021. But I thank you also that when other people listen to this after today, you're still in this time and i just thank you for being all present ever present all the time thank you for your word that you left us um and the word you continue to speak to us through your holy spirit and today lord we leave this with you we ask that you be the teacher um and that we all learn from you as you speak through each of us um the words that you want to communicate today um so anoint this time um, for your glory, for our good, for the encouragement um, and building up of others in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Miss Anita, Amen. would you read uh, the scriptures for us today? Yes. The scripture for today is 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verses 3 through 6. For though we live in the world... We do not rage war as the world does. The mm. weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine powers to demolish strongholds. In the fifth verse, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience with your disobedience when your obedience is complete. <laughs> Amen. That's the word of God. That is Amen. the word. Amen. And God Amen. bless it. Yes. For those who read and heard that word today. So, so last week, as I said, we defined what a spiritual stronghold is in our life. Mm -hmm. And basically, we, we said that it's this place in our mind, typically, where we allow faulty beliefs or the lies of the enemy to become our reality. And mm -hmm. we talked about how Satan, you know, seeks to kill still kill and destroy but he seeks to slowly do that by using these lies mm -hmm. to man to manipulate our life so that he's not only affecting us he's affecting others because he's also trying to keep us from being the person that god designed us to be so today we're going to focus on some of the origins of spiritual strongholds and i think we're going to focus on three areas there one is family slash church of origin. A second one is pain and trauma that we experience. And the third is uh, just neglected sin in our life. So Joy, first, I'm going to give the question to you. How, how can family and church of origin issues lead us into spiritual strongholds? Yeah, so um, I I say I gladly took this question. <laughs> you did volunteer. <laughs> I did volunteer this question, didn't I? Yeah, so I, I, I know a, a thing or two um, because I've experienced a thing or two. So I guess that's um, 
you know, your own life and your own story is such a um, compelling thing to share, I think, because it's what you know and what you can share honestly and openly. But think about it this way. What you were taught or saw modeled as a child has a huge impact on what you believe, on your belief system, on your core, the core of your reality. And if you look at it in this way, like when you were born, literally a story began to be written about your life, um, a story, a narrative that you were actually writing based on your life experiences and the belief system that was taught you or modeled to you. And often, that was shaped um, by your parents, your siblings, your family of origin, but also by um, the church that you went to as a child, your church family. So those are two areas that, that greatly affect. And maybe you grew up um, in a foster home or um, maybe even an orphanage or all kind of different ways um, that people have grown up in their family, uh, you know, uh, as a child. And wherever that was, though, those family, that family scenario shaped a lot of what you experienced and what you believe. Um, and church obviously does. So here are some things as well-meaning as parents or guardians, um, or our church growing up, as well-meaning as the people in those families were, um, often some strongholds might have been created in your narrative um, from your church family or your family of origin, your background situation. So I'm just going to name a few, and there are many, but I'm going to name a few that, that you might relate to. Um, one being is a low self-esteem or unworthy. And I think this comes from um, either your parents or your church family conveying the message to you that you're only worthy if you look good to other people if you act good in other situations, if you're accepted by those, you know, in your um, world around you, your community, your church people, your family people, um, even some things like, I know some people felt like they weren't really good Christians unless they could sing or preach or, mm -hmm you know, sing in the choir, play the piano, the organ. I mean, there were all these things that somehow in our brain, we thought these are the gifts that are the greatest gifts. And if I don't have this gift, I'm not as good as other people. So some of that is our own making uh, in our mind. But a lot of times, somehow though that narrative was conveyed to us, whether overtly or just subtly, you know, model to us so that unworthy thing um the other thing is say say um you got a divorce and even remarried i mean sometime in churches or families like you know you're you're staying now you're you're on the shelf you can't be used by god which i must say right now is a lie but um i just wanted to clear that right now but Yes. But those kind of things, those kind of situations, or say there was a, um, a sexual sin or an immorality of some kind, I mean, those things got listed as like, you know, the deadly sins of all time, and then you can't even um, be used for God, or, or you, you're not a good human being, or whatever, those are thoughts that your parents might have somehow communicated. You might have heard your parents talk about other people mm -hmm. and how they felt about other people. And that solidified a belief to you or an idea that, oh, that is bad and the bad of all bads, you know. Or you might have heard a church, a pastor, or a Sunday school teacher or something say things. And you didn't realize it, but you started planting seeds in your own story your own narrative like that this is true 
um, this is what God thinks as well. And some of those were good, some of them not so good. So another one that the church can often, or your family of origin can often um, uh, create is guilt or shame. And that's a big one. Um, if I don't, it, you might have felt or, or you might have had this created in you that if I don't go to a certain denominational uh, denomination of a church, um, you know, then I'm wrong, I'm bad, or if I don't wear certain clothes, um, I'm wrong, or I'm not pleasing to God, or, um, you know, heaven forbid, like I said earlier, if I fall into some sexual sin, um, then, oh my goodness, I'm just on the shelf forever. So those, those are things that, you know, we subconsciously might have added to our narrative, our story, um, and it might have created this stronghold of just this horrible guilt or shame. Another one, though, that is even more subtle, um, often, um, I know my story of origin was a lot of legalism, and so very fear-based, um, very rule-based, well, the problem with that is often we had more of a list of don'ts than a list of do's. And with our list of don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't, 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 um, we weren't given as much of you have the freedom to do this, this, and this um, as God has designed it. So the problem with that is often it makes you feel like you've got to get everything right. You've got to be perfect. And what can happen there is stronghold. And listen, I am queen bee of all this. Um, a lot of this I'm getting ready to read to you. Um, it can lead to a stronghold of perfectionism. Um, OCD, where you just obsess over trying to get everything right. Here I am. Uh, depression and anxiety from perceived failure. Uh, and I say perceived because sometimes you feel like a failure when you're not at all in God's eyes, but this perceived failure, I didn't get it right based on this narrative that I have written from my story of upbringing in church or family. Um, a stronghold of fear. And what about this one? Workaholism. I've got to work, work, work. Cause if you don't work, you don't eat. Isn't that the thing? And so, I mean, there's just this whole thing. Um, and speaking of eating, how about overeating? Oh my gosh. How much do we comfort ourselves with all that? And then, um, or we, it might lead to just unhealthy sexual relationships or codependent relationships See, those are the subtle things that we don't realize the reason we might have that as a stronghold is because of this legalistic fear-based rule-based um, background that that was woven into the narrative and and now you know we, we've just got this stronghold of thought um, that's really killing us and the feeling of defeat is inevitable in that situation so I'll tell you um, yeah, the narrative is laced with the feeling God only loves me if, mm -hmm. fill in the blank. God only loves me when, fill in the blank, like when I get it right, or if I look like this or do that, you know, all that. So that's kind of the question. If you ask yourself, depending on what you come up with, that'll maybe let you know um, some strongholds that might have been developed during that time. Later, we're going to talk about all these negative strongholds, and we're going to give truth to combat the lies. But I tell you what, <laughs> we're also going to talk about what things from your background to hold on to, and what things to throw out, um, because what God says about you is what really matters versus man-made religion or man-made rules or spiritual rules or all those things. Anyway, for now, Anita, um, talk to us about how trauma can cause strongholds to develop. Well, 
<laughs> First of all, thank you, Joy. You said a lot of, of, of things there. As a matter of fact, some that definitely did include trauma. I, I also <laughs> thought about um, something else you said. As, as you were describing your experiences, mine was basically the same. So mm -hmm. we must have the same strong. We, have, we, we must share a similar strongholds because most likely when I in my in my uh, church affiliation and growing up, everything was wrong. Uh, we couldn't wear a uh, we couldn't fly in an air, airplane. We oh. couldn't. We, I'm I'm telling you, I was was more serious. We couldn't <laughs> watch TV. Uh, they, everything was demonic. Flying in the airplane, watching TV, uh, TV, going to a game, football game, or going to a basketball game, any types of sports. And I don't think you can identify, I don't think either one of you can identify with that. So, uh, but also in my growing up, um, I can also have to thank God because of our parents. Um, we had good parents, and, and, and I can't really elaborate on that unless I can really explain to you what good is. Um, out of nine, most of us are wholesome. <laughs> all of us was wholesome, because all your children ain't going to be, we, you know, we're going to have something. We're going to have a situation in the bunch. If you got three, you may have one that's not necessarily wholesome. But anyway, the traumas. The traumas that's involved in strongholds. Uh, oh my God, that is such a serious matter. Mm -hmm. uh, the strongholds, as we've already said, is an area of darkness in our mind, is in our personality. And it causes ongoing spiritual, emotional, and behavioral problems. Mm -hmm. uh, we can be genuinely born again and yet face these strongholds. Mm. Sincere in our faith, we could be sincere in our faith, but we have an ongoing struggle with our thoughts and our emotions. And you would think that once you are born again, that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, we have to be born again, mm. but we're gonna have to be able to deal with these strongholds. The reason why they are there and refuse to move because in a trauma situation, and my intent was to look up the simple word, we think we know what trauma is, but pain, anything that hurts can be a trauma. I think there is a, a level of pain. There is uh, kinds of pain that's more se serious than others. Mm -hmm. And then there is another type of pain that we would put in a trauma category. And then there's another type of pain that we could just ease off ourselves or fight off ourselves by simply saying, I'm sorry. And that pain just like uh, uh, well by simply accepting the apology or the uh, repentance of the other person, uh, we could uh, fight that off. We pray, we study, and we attempt to discipline ourselves, but we often find that our problem is resistance to a real change. Resistance. The problem is resi it resists the real change. And I heard someone say the other day that the enemy, and see, these are really not stuff that we've told ourselves. This information comes directly from the enemy. That's the reason why we don't fight against one another because it is not the person. It was not me that caused your pain to build up a stronghold. And it wasn't you that causes my pain to build up a stronghold. It was the enemy. They enter into the trauma. Once you've experienced a pain or some sort of trouble, and that could be any, any trauma, any type of trauma, that opens up the door for the enemy to come in to your house. And when he gets there, when the enemy gets there, he brings his brothers and his cousins with him. So there is more than one demon, and they live there. They live and then they start building inside of your house. They build up a wall. This is demonic stuff we're talking about. A stronghold then, what they do is as they're building up these strong walls, uh, it comes from the lie. And we, we hear these lies based on the trauma that we have experienced. A stronghold is a lie 
mm. which we have allowed, and there it is, we allow it to distort or confuse our thinking. The lie that is, a lie can gain a foothold within our minds and our emotions. And I just said that these lies then speak or seek rather a place of control within our personality. Our personality becomes their house. That's where they reside. They take control over our emotions, our ambitions, motivations. They take priority over our desires. Every Christian's heart and mind is to focus in the target of lies. Christians, that is. One of the most common causes, and, and this information that I'm, I'm getting, I, I, I listen to a lot of people on Facebook, but um, this person don't have names, but they have websites. And I was told is that if you couldn't reference a name, reference a website. But this person is actually named Jim. And I try to remember here because I want to look him up. Jim Coin at ChristianArmor.net. <laughs> That's who he is. I may have to go over that again if you're interested in pulling this up. He says that one of the most common causes of spiritual and emotional strongholds are the sins of others. Hmm. That is when others hurt you. Unfortunately, the sins of others can profoundly affect our lives. People can say or do something that has the potential to forever change us. Even a single word, a word like stupid. A father can tell a son, you're stupid. And the enemy comes into that and start building a stronghold. And that son has only to hear it one time. And hearing it one time, stupid can build up the stronghold because that person, that's trauma. That person can start believing I'm stupid. And the other thing that Joy reminded me of is in spite of all these things that happen to us and it's not always necessarily somebody else, sometimes we lie to ourselves. It's not always somebody else. And we lie to ourselves. The enemy doesn't care where the lie comes from. He still enters in. And this is probably one thing that I can identify with when I was in school, uh, high school, uh, grade school and high school. It's one of the lies that we tell that I told myself is that I'm not as pretty as this person. I'm not as good as this person. What we do to ourselves is we compare peers. Or we take in all the other peers they have a whole classroom of students. These are my peers. And I can tell myself they are smarter than me. That's a lie. They look better. Oh, her hair is longer than mine. I like her shoes better than I like the shoes my mama bought me. They wearing a pretty dress and I don't have nothing like that. That's the enemy is building up these lies because I have compared myself. No one told me to do that. My mama never told me I was ugly. She, she didn't see my face, but she already knew what we looked like. Now don't ask me to explain that. She never <laughs> saw our face, but she knew what we looked like. I think the Lord must have told her. She, but they're very godly people in our household. Uh, now, I don't know where I was. People who suffer serious emotional trauma are prime candidates for spiritual stronghold. Mm -hmm. Ongoing memories of painful events prepare the heart. It for painful events prepares the heart to accept the suggestions of darkness. Mm -hmm. If we're occupied or preoccupied with our painful past, then we will not be able to live out the redemptive victories of Christ, even though we are born again. Mm -hmm. We will not be able to grow in faith, and we will not be able to possess and walk out our new identity in Christ. Painful memories. And a lot of times they take root, become so painful, it causes us to react sick. Mm -hmm mentally physically it causes us to be like and we don't even remember where it came from so we could be suffering from pain that has caused addiction 
and that has caused other un, uh, relationship problems, unwanted situations, and we don't know that it, it came from the person who raped me when I was 12 years old. We don't necessarily know where it came from. But that's why those demons living in our personality is building up painful memories can and will drive us to bitterness. People are bitter because of some trauma that happened to them and they don't know what it was. Hatred. That's a word, I'm gonna skip the next word. Or depression. But the word of God will bring us healing. That ends everything I got on my path. But that is, so this is so real, y'all. This is serious. And I'm supposed to ask another question. Because, and, and not because I was told to ask this question, but I really want to know how can neglected sin create spiritual strongholds, Terry? Well, I tell you what, y'all, you guys have described me a lot with, uh, with what you've talked about with the family of origin, church of origin issues and, and trauma in life that really manifest in, in, you know, these um, strongholds that we're talking about. But God's word tells us, you know, that sin originated with Satan. I mean, it originated first in heaven when he rebelled and Satan and a third of the angels were cast out because of that rebellion. But it originated on earth with man, with Satan tempting Adam and Eve, you know, in the garden. And his real reason to do that was to separate them from God, because that's actually what sin is. It, it's us being, not being obedient to God, you know, and Satan has used that same tactic now throughout history to separate us from God. Um, I pulled some scripture from Ephesians where Paul says, when you lived in sin, and he's talking to believers here, and so speaking to us as believers, when you lived in sin, you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And the word disobedient kind of jumped off the page at me there because you know disobedient is just this key word because sin is disobedience to God and to his word that's where it originated God had told Adam and Eve do not eat of this fruit and they ate of the fruit they disobeyed God which introduced sin into the world um and, and I got to thinking too about um well, I was going to reference another scripture in 1 Peter 2, 8 says that we stumble when we are disobedient to God. That's when we stumble, when we are not obedient to God's word. And I believe Satan loves to ask us that same question that he asked Eve in the garden. Did God really say that? Mm. Or to convince us that that's not really true, what God said. Mm -hmm. you take a bite of this apple. You're not really going to die. And I think we tend to fall into that same trap. Um, you know, he builds those strongholds in us by convincing us that what we see, the things of this world, are better than the truth of God's word. And, and, I think that's when sin really starts to build those strongholds in us. That when we are disobedient to God's word, we and and we rebel against that. And actually, I believe that much of the sin that builds the strongholds, um, you know, comes from this sense of tolerance. And also neglect. We talked about neglected sin here, that we grow tolerant of sin in our lives. We allow little things into our lives, little sins uh, into our lives, thinking they're not so bad. I mean, it's, I'm sure Eve thought, well, it's really not such a bad thing to take a bite of an apple, which 
in reality, it's not a bad thing to take a bite of an apple. But when God tells you not to do that, then it's a bad thing. Um, and so for us, little things like, and I was just thinking about, like things we watch on TV or movies, you know, music that we listen to, um, sometimes places that we go and even people that we interact with, um, don't want to step on toes here, but social media platforms that we follow sometimes are this means of us letting these little things into our heads and into our hearts. I, you know, only in probably the last, well, honestly, since my wife Tanya and I have been married, have I really stopped watching certain types of, mu of movies and things. Because prior to that, I watched all sorts of things and it was, and, and now I realize though that I, that was me allowing this sin into me that um, when I would watch certain things, you know, it would, it would just, and especially, and, and I made a reference here that I was going to say that now, um, you know, I, I watch more like the old Turner classic type movies, the classic movies. And it's interesting as I look back and watch those movies that I never have to cringe over a word that's said or cringe because of some sexual overtones or even really cringe because of violence, especially and yeah. something that really bothers me where I know the world where we're letting sin in is this um, disregard for human life. That's yeah. so in, it's so enthralled in movies in Lord in video games that I see kids mm -hmm. and grandkids playing that this, all this, things like that are just so prevalent there. And they're these really subtle little things that Satan is just using to bring sin into our lives. Right. It's funny, I, I thought about the old classic line, you know, that the kids all, used to always say, but everybody's doing it. You know, mm -hmm. we, we love it. So well, everybody's watching those movies or everybody's on social media or Everybody right. listens to rock and roll music or, right. you know, or whatever like that. But if you think about it, anytime you said it or you, or you heard your children or grandchildren say that, they knew they were wrong. Mm -hmm. They weren't saying they wasn't wrong. Everybody's doing it. They knew that it was wrong. So, right. so the enemy, you know, preys on us, like I said, in such subtle ways that mm -hmm. if our spiritual condition isn't right, and we're going to talk about solutions in the next few weeks. We're kind of just talking about the, the problem a little bit today. But if our spiritual condition is not right, we're going to fall in that trap. If we're not being obedient to God's word there, we're going to fall into that trap. Um, I, I pulled a reference. I'm involved in, in some 12-step recovery groups. And uh, I pulled a line from the, the, it's from the big book of AA, actually. And it says... And of course, it's talking about alcoholism here and drinking. It says, we simply have a daily reprieve. So just for today, we've got a reprieve that's based on our spiritual condition, based on where I am with God today. I won't drink. I won't view pornography. I won't listen to music I shouldn't listen to. I, I won't fall into my sinful nature based on where I am with God. And that's, that's just foreshadowing to the solution here that we'll begin to talk about some more next week. Um, so when we're disobedient to God's word, we allow that sin to slowly creep in and we allow Satan to build those strongholds. And, you know, as I'm thinking and seeing this so often, those, those are just these strongholds of tolerance and neglect that we allow it in subtly until it's got control and we're we're trapped in the stronghold mm -hmm. but there is a way out and we'll start yeah. talking about that next week any yeah. any other thoughts you ladies have before we wrap it up today yeah i um man thank you guys terry and anita for just all that you said um anita i love this line that you said that um that strongholds distort our thinking um, and it's seeking a place of control. Um, 
So that line that you read, um, thank you to that pastor who wrote that or whoever. Um, but I'll tell you, one thing I did want to be clear here from us here at Intentional Faith is um, when we're talking about these strongholds, we're not saying that if you have, all of us have some kind of stronghold, let yes. me just say, <laughs> every single Christian has some kind of a stronghold, whether you know it or not. What we're not saying is that, uh, that you are demon possessed. We're not saying that. Um, what this, we're saying that strongholds um, develop because the enemy is assaulting us on a daily basis. Um, and there he has his demons who are seeking to kill, steal, and destroy us. So let me just say that. It's also from the battle of our own mind, our own thinking. Um, and then, you know, hurts and things done to us. Um, you know, that those are all things that can create these strongholds. Um, but I just want to be clear, we're not saying that if you have a stronghold, you're not a Christian, or that these strongholds are demon possession. Because um, that's what I want. Because some people can really get weirded out by that, and, and then it just creates more fear, more defeat. Um, these are things that every single Christian follower of Jesus has to deal with let me just say and one other quick thing from all that we've said is that um sometime you can be like the walking the best walk you've ever walked with jesus obeying him at every level and just because you're you know in just the best place relationally with god ever even that does not mean that you are not going to be tempted with strongholds uh, uh, to develop. You know what I mean? The enemy is going to go after you even more. That's so right. it's not just when it is absolutely when you're, you know, neglecting sin in your life. Absolutely. You are just laying yourself open. Um, but I'll tell you this too. I mean, sometimes I've had just the most intimate times with God and afterwards just been assaulted by the enemy mm -hmm. in my mind of all these, you know, wrong thinking. Um, so I just wanted to pull that because I know Terry and, and Anita and I want you to know that. I feel like I can speak for all of us in saying yeah. that, that, um, you know, don't feel defeated, honey. We're all in there. So, and we're all walking together to help each other. So. That's right. That's, yeah, yeah I appreciate that too, Joy, what you said. We definitely don't want to think that we're demon possessed. That's right. a totally different situation. Absolutely. Uh, strong, and strongholds, once they get, once that stronghold builds up, they don't, they ain't going nowhere. Yeah. They're not going anywhere until you, we learn to do what, what, what we're going to talk about next week. That's right. That's there right. is a deliverance, but until yeah. then, until then, they they are there and they are getting stronger and stronger and stronger until we do what we're gonna say we're gonna do next week. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's, Amen, a, that's, sister. that's that's a good segue for uh, for next week where we will start looking at the solution of how we tear down these strongholds that yeah. uh, that get built up in our lives. So um, yeah. so let's uh, close with a word of prayer. Yeah. And Father God, uh, always first, we're going to come praising your great name. Father, you are just so good. Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Father, that you are the true stronghold. And Jesus is our firm foundation that that is built on. And our salvation and our freedom from these strongholds are right there in you. So thank you for that, Father. We, we know that that is true. Father, just help us for the awareness to see those strongholds, to see how they develop, to see how our family of origin, church of origin, how the traumas and pain that we've experienced in our lives and how just the sin in our lives that we neglect and tolerate, how those build these strongholds. Help us to have that awareness and understanding because that's the first step in tearing down the wall. 
Father, we have to realize it's there. So thank you for that clarification for us this week. We just pray your blessings over that as we as we go into this research for next week and how we tear these walls down, Father. Just uh, show us how you tear them down in us, Father. And we'll give give you the glory. We'll give you that opportunity. We'll surrender that all to you. Thank you, Father. And we just lift up this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 All right. Everyone have a great week. We'll see you next time. Thank you.